Chapter 5 The large basement of the house was already clouded with cigarette and marijuana smoke. On a far wall, the words, No Exit, were spray-painted in red, black, and silver letters the size of house windows. Breathing in the pungent smoke, Cindy started to cough. Holding her hand, Bobby led her into the room. It's all right, he whispered. I won't let nothing happen to you. Cindy squinted and noticed two blurry figures sitting close together. As she and Bobby moved further into the room, someone turned on thumping rap music that made conversation almost impossible. As Cindy watched, the two guys in the corner began heating heroin with a lit match. She had heard about people doing that, but she had never seen it. One of the boys rolled up his sleeve and the other guy wrapped a belt around the first guy's arm. Cindy watched in horror as the one guy plunged a needle into the other's forearm, and his veins jumped out like fat, wet noodles. "'What's up, Bobby?' said the guy holding the needle. Cindy was bothered that Bobby knew such a person. She wondered how close they were. Although Bobby didn't answer the guy, he did nod at him in recognition. "'That's Omar.' And the guy next to him is T-Bone, Bobby whispered. Bobby, let's get out of here, Cindy pleaded. Omar shot himself up and was soon spaced out as well. The drug seemed to sweep over the young men in waves. For a second, they seemed normal. And then abruptly, their eyes snapped shut, their knees trembled, and drool snaked down their chins. Cindy felt like she might throw up. I hate this place, Bobby. I want to go now, Cindy demanded. She did not care what Bobby thought of her. She just wanted to get out of the house. Bobby took her hand and led her out the front door. Taking a deep breath of fresh air, Cindy was grateful to be outside again, but she was shaken by what she had just seen. She glanced over at Bobby. He was watching her. How do you know those guys? she asked. Oh, they both used to go to Blueford, he said. Omar and T-Bone used to play football back in the day. Then they got hooked on drugs. That's too bad, she replied, still unsettled by her experience. Some people get strung out, Bobby added. But not me. They're junkies, but I ain't about that. I used to get high on weekends, but it was never on the heavy stuff. I'm glad, Cindy said. She appreciated his honesty, but in her mind, she kept seeing the look on the boys' faces as the drugs rushed into their bodies. You ever shoot up, Cindy? He asked, snapping her out of her thoughts. No, Cindy exclaimed. She was embarrassed at how loud her response was, but she could not hide how uncomfortable she felt. She was certain Bobby thought she was naive and stupid, the kind of girl that guys like him were never interested in. Look, Bobby, I'm sorry, but can we just get out of here? She pleaded. Sure, he said, putting his arm around her. As they silently made their way to his car, Cindy was grateful that Bobby did not tease or criticize her for the way she acted. Even if he did know the guys in the basement, he was nothing like them. You're a lot nicer than some kids been saying, Bobby, Cindy said. What have I been trying to tell you? I ain't a bad guy, Cindy. Bobby declared as he started the car. After pulling in front of Cindy's apartment, Bobby caressed her cheek and said, Maybe I'm going a little too fast, huh? I do that sometimes when I really like somebody. I don't want to push you. I know we ain't been tight all that long, but I want you to have something. Bobby pulled a jacket from the back seat and put it around Cindy's shoulders. Your varsity jacket? Cindy gasped. She could not believe what was happening. This makes it official, Cindy thought. If she wore the jacket to Blueford, everyone in the school would know she really was Bobby Wallace's girl. Are you serious? She asked, unable to contain her excitement. I want you to wear it, Cindy, Bobby said, because you're special to me. Oh, Bobby, thank you, Cindy screamed and kissed him on the lips. When she got out of his car, she turned and looked at him, unable to stop herself from smiling. 
I'll see you in school on Monday, he said. Cindy waved as he drove off. When Cindy reached her apartment door, Rose Davis stepped out into the hallway. Praise the Lord! You all right, child? she asked. Sure, I'm fine, Cindy said. Why? Child, you've been gone all day. I knocked on your door and there was nobody home. Where's your mama? Cindy had not expected Mrs. Davis to be so concerned about her. Mom's on a business trip, Cindy lied. Honey child, I am an old woman, and a lot of this modern life is way over my head, but I got sense enough to know that a mother ought not leave her 15-year-old daughter all by herself for all this time. Cindy shrugged. Ordinarily, she would have defended her mother from anyone's criticism. But there was something about Mrs. Davis that showed she really cared, and it felt good to have someone worry about her. Mom is off with her boyfriend, Cindy admitted. Something came up suddenly, and she just went. <sighs> Mrs. Davis grunted, shaking her head side to side in disbelief. Child, would you like some hot chocolate and fresh-baked raisin cookies? That sounds real good, Cindy said, happy to talk to somebody and grateful not to have to return to her lonely apartment. As Cindy sat at the kitchen table, Mrs. Davis asked, When your mama getting back? Tomorrow morning, Cindy said. Tomorrow? She left you all weekend? It's okay, Cindy said, nibbling on a cookie still soft and warm from the oven. You've been out with your boyfriend all day, haven't you? Mrs. Davis asked. Yeah, Cindy said, smiling. He gave me his blue for varsity jacket. Look, isn't it cool? When boys let you wear their jackets, it means they really like you. Well, some things haven't changed, Mrs. Davis said, smiling. When I was a girl, if a boy went off to the army, he'd leave you with things to remember him by. The man I ended up marrying gave me something special the day he left for the army. It was a ring that belonged to his father, and I cherished it every day. Bobby hasn't given me a ring yet, Cindy replied, but maybe he will. Honey, don't be rushing nothing, Mrs. Davis gently warned. Cindy smiled, feeling silly for a moment. Child, have you got a grandma? I used to, but she passed away when I was little, Cindy answered. I hardly remember her. Well, let me be your grandma then. You can call me Grandma Rose or just Grandma, Mrs. Davis said. Thanks, Mrs. Davis, Cindy said, grateful to the kind old woman. I mean, Grandma Rose. Mrs. Davis smiled warmly as she served the hot chocolate. Now. Tell me all about your boyfriend, she said, sitting down across from Cindy. He's really nice, Cindy began. His name is Bobby Wallace, and Harold has told me about that Bobby Wallace, Mrs. Davis interjected, frowning. He has a very bad reputation, honey. People just don't understand him, Grandma Rose. Bobby has changed. He doesn't do bad stuff anymore. You believe people can change, don't you? It's like they always say in church. People can repent and change, and we're supposed to forgive them, right? Yes, Cindy, I do believe in that. But folks have to really and truly change in their hearts. Sometimes they put on nice behavior, but deep down they haven't changed at all, Mrs. Davis said. So you got to be real careful, child, because you're precious. You're precious. The words echoed in Cindy's mind. She had been starved for kind words for so long that they were like a burst of rain on parched soil, spilling over instead of sinking in. I ain't precious, she said, thinking of her mother and Raffi. I know that. Hush your mouth, Mrs. Davis said sternly. You are a beautiful child of the Lord, and you deserve a young man as fine as you. Don't let me ever hear you disrespecting yourself, child. You understand? I won't stand for it. As she spoke, Mrs. Davis put her thick arms around Cindy 
and gave her a warm hug. Nestled amidst the scent of fresh cookies and dish soap, Cindy felt loved and protected. Thank you, Cindy said softly as Mrs. Davis gradually relaxed her strong embrace. I'm here for you, child, Mrs. Davis said. Don't you forget that. Thank you, Grandma Rose, Cindy said before walking back to her apartment. Alone in her room, Cindy busied herself with ideas for cartoons for the Blueford Bugler. She had to get her mind off the prospect of another night by herself in the gloomy apartment. Her mother would not be home until the next morning. Then she would go right to bed and sleep until the afternoon when she had to go to work. Cindy wondered if her mother would be wearing a ring on her finger, a ring from Raffy with his jangling gold chains. Cindy stayed up until midnight, sketching cartoon ideas. Then she got dressed for bed, placed Bobby's jacket on a nearby chair, and crawled under her covers. Before falling asleep, she grabbed Bobby's jacket and held it next to her. It smelled like the musky cologne Bobby wore. She fell asleep holding one sleeve next to her cheek. Cindy woke up to the smell of brewing coffee. Mom? Cindy cried, jumping up from bed and stumbling into the hallway in her bare feet. I'm in the kitchen, her mother called. As she entered the kitchen half asleep, Cindy remembered how angry she was at her mother. Well, you finally got back, huh? She said, sitting at the small table. Despite how happy and relieved she was that her mother was home, Cindy was unable to smile or say anything nice to her. Well... That's a nice welcome. What's your problem? Her mother snapped. It was really mean of you to leave like that for two days, Cindy said bitterly. I couldn't believe you'd do that. Oh, Cindy, give me a break. You're 15 years old. You're always complaining that I don't give you enough credit for being grown up. Well, now I did. I trusted you to behave yourself with nobody breathing down your neck, and that's a compliment that you ought to appreciate. Aren't you always saying, Mom, I'm 15 years old, her mother said with a whiny, childish voice. Mom, I'm not a baby anymore. Cindy's rage grew. Mom was not even apologetic. She acted as if she had done nothing wrong. I spent the whole time with my boyfriend, she said spitefully. Girl, don't lie to me. I know you don't have a boyfriend, her mother said, pouring a cup of coffee. I do now, Cindy cried, and we were together all weekend, drinking and kissing and stuff. He gave me his varsity jacket. I guess he loves me or he wouldn't have given it to me. Cindy's mother turned sharply, spilling coffee on the table. You better watch your mouth, she yelled. Do you want a good slap across your face? You keep talking like that and that's just what you'll get, girl. Cindy sat down at the table and sulked. She didn't see a ring on her mother's finger, and that consoled her. Raffy probably found another excuse to push it off again, Cindy thought. They had been dating now for a year, and Mom hoped to get married. But Raffy always had a reason why it had to be postponed. So, Cindy said at last, did you and the creep have a good time? You say another bad thing to me this morning, and I'll slap you silly. You hear me? Mom growled. I am tired of you dissing Raffy. He's a fine man. Whatever happens with me and him is none of your business. He didn't give you a ring, did he? Cindy asked. I told you it was none of your business. And he won't give you one either, Cindy persisted. And you should be glad, too. Who wants Raffy for a husband? I sure don't want him for a stepfather. I'd run away if you ever married him. That's what I'd... Mom's hand struck Cindy on the side of her cheek. The slap was not hard, but it stung Cindy's face. It was the first time in years Mom had hit her. She looked at her mother in disbelief. I told you I didn't want to hear no more from you, Mom said. I'm going to lie down and get some sleep now, and I don't want to hear your voice. Go do your homework or whatever. You make me wish I didn't come home. Mom stumped down the hall to her bedroom and slammed the door. 
Cindy remained at the kitchen table. She put her hand over the spot her mother had hit, rested her head down on the tabletop, and cried. She did not want to fight with Mom. She had missed her so much. What Cindy wanted more than anything was to tell Mom about her new job on the school paper, her talk with Mr. Mitchell, and, of course, Bobby Wallace. But instead, she had spoiled what little time they had together by fighting. Cindy said nothing as the tears rolled down her cheeks. She kept thinking her mother would hear her crying and come rushing out and put her arms around her and say, Baby, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I went off with Raffi, and I'm sorry for slapping you. Forgive me. But she didn't. Tears never changed anything, Cindy thought. Her eyes ached, her head throbbed, and her nose burned. But in the end, nothing was changed. Nothing was any different. Around 10 o'clock, the phone rang and Cindy rushed to answer it, hoping it was Bobby. Hi, Cindy, it's me, Jamie said. My sister has the car and we're going to the mall. Want to come? Yeah, Cindy said eager to get out of the apartment. She pulled on clean jeans and a tank top and ran downstairs to wait for the car. She hoped Jamie would not criticize her for dating Bobby Wallace. Cindy was certain Jamie knew by now. Amber Lynn probably told her everything. Darcy and Jamie pulled up in an old beige Ford. Isn't it great? Darcy said, sitting at the wheel. She was a junior with a new driver's license, and she shared the car with her mother. Cindy could not wait for the day when she had a car of her own. She would drive far away and maybe never even come back. I wish I could drive, Cindy said. My mom probably wouldn't let me borrow her car, though, she said, climbing into the car. Because you're only 15, Darcy added. Besides, I'm 17, and the only time I get to drive is when my mother isn't working. Believe me, I know how it feels to be trapped at home, Darcy said pulling out into the street. Cindy, are you really going out with Bobby Wallace? Jamie asked suddenly. Cindy took a deep breath. Listen, Jamie, I know what you're thinking, but it's not like that. Bobby isn't the same person he was when you went out with him. But how do you know that for sure? Jamie asked indignantly. And besides, Cindy, don't you think it's a little rude of you to go after some guy that I used to date? Rude? Cindy repeated. I don't see anything rude about it. I mean, you two were together so long ago. Like just last year, Jamie said quickly. That's besides the point, Cindy. You know what I went through with Bobby. You know what he did to me, and you're still going out with him? Jamie, I don't need nobody trying to mind my business for me. Now, I already told Amber Lynn to, both of you relax, Darcy cut in, turning away from the steering wheel to glance at Cindy. Jamie's just worried about you, that's all. And so am I. Don't forget that Bobby beat Jamie up, and he threatened me. Any boy who treats girls like that is dangerous. I don't know what makes you think he's changed so much, Darcy explained. Yeah, Jamie spoke up. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't want you going through what happened to me. This isn't about you dating my ex, Cindy. It's about you being safe. Jamie, I appreciate what you're saying. Cindy said, cooling down. You too, Darcy. But you just don't know Bobby like I do. He's a good guy now. That boy was crazy last year, Jamie said somberly. Yeah, but so were you, Darcy interjected. Jamie flashed Darcy a quick glare. Seriously, Cindy, Jamie said. What makes you think he's any different now? He said he was doing drugs last year and that messed up his mind. Now he's clean, and he's really nice, Cindy said. Just be careful, Darcy warned. Take things real slow, Cindy. Does your mom mind you hanging out with Bobby, knowing his rep? Jamie asked. My mom doesn't have a clue about anything I do. She lets me do whatever I want, Cindy said. I wish my mom was like that, Jamie said. Don't be stupid, Jamie, Darcy grumbled. Anyway, Cindy, your mom wouldn't want you dating Bobby if she knew what kind of guy he was. Yeah, well, she's got no room to talk right now, Cindy replied, 
leaning back in the seat as they drove into the parking lot of the mall. She was not in the mood to talk about her mother. Instead, she wanted to buy some new things. She had $40 her mother had given her weeks ago for school clothes. She had not spent it at the time because she didn't care much for school or what she wore. But now she had a reason to shop. She wanted to be pretty for Bobby. She wanted to put a big smile on his face. As the girls walked towards the mall, Darcy kept talking about her mother and ER nurse was determined to make Darcy's prom dress. I told her she doesn't have the time, but she won't listen, Darcy said. She says Grandma made her first party dress, and she wants to do the same thing for me. A pang of jealousy struck Cindy. She wished she had a close family like Darcy and Jamie's. Know what? Cindy said, bitterness sweeping over her. My mom left town Friday night, and she didn't get back till this morning. No joke. I was alone all that time because she was with her boyfriend, Raffy. All he ever does is insult me, Cindy added, fighting back tears of anger and hurt. He lies to my mom about it, and she believes him over me. He drives his new Mercedes and wears gold chains and earrings. I think he looks like a big fool, but he thinks he's the man. Mom is crazy about him. It's like, if Raffy and I were drowning, she'd go save him and let me drown. Cindy, Jamie said, that's stupid. Your mom doesn't think that. Don't you try to tell me how my mother is? You don't live with me, so how would you know? Not everyone's family is as perfect as yours, Cindy yelled angered at how Jamie denied what she lived through each day. I'm telling you, she doesn't care about me. She wasn't always this way. I guess being in love with somebody is like being on drugs or something. Ever since Raffy came along, she's been different. It's like she wishes I would just go away so she wouldn't have to deal with me no more. Cindy looked down at her fingernails. Jamie and Darcy remained silent. Know what else? Cindy said, her voice trembling. I don't care either. I don't care if mom doesn't love me. Not anymore. I don't need her. I just need Bobby. I think he loves me, you guys. He calls me Cinderella, and he really loves me. Jamie threw an arm around Cindy. I'm sorry, girl, she said. I'm not going to tell you I'm happy about you and Bobby. But no matter what, I will always be here for you. And so will Amberlynn. And me too, Darcy cut in. We'll love you, with or without Bobby Wallace, Jamie said, pulling Cindy close to her and giving her a warm hug. Darcy placed her hand on Cindy's back then. Come on, Cindy. Let's shop till we drop. Together, they walked into the mall without a word, the three girls with their arms around each other.